In the last section, we introduced you to data structures and algorithms and why this is such an important subject to JavaScript development. This is section 2, Arrays, Linked Lists, and Sets. In this section, we'll get our feet wet by looking at three data structures to get us started. The first structure we'll look at is the array, which you're probably already familiar with since JavaScript provides a native implementation of arrays. Next, we'll talk about linked lists, which for some reason aren't as popular in dynamic languages as arrays are, but are still just as powerful a construct. And then finally, we'll talk about set, which although they're pretty straightforward, we can solve some pretty complex programming problems using them. In this first video, we'll talk about arrays. After describing what arrays can be used for, we'll look at the most commonly used operations in arrays in JavaScript. Then we'll take a look at the transformation operations added to the arrays prototype in ECMAScript 5. And finally, we'll take a look at a hands-on exercise to help you put arrays to good use. Anyone who's been programming for longer than a day are likely already familiar with what arrays are. In any case, an array is a container of elements that allows us to group related data together. In most programming languages, arrays are implemented in such a way where every element in the array lays in memory next to one another. This means that we can very efficiently access any arbitrary element within the array by simply performing arithmetic on the memory address of the array. In JavaScript, things are a little different. And the reason is that arrays are really implemented as objects, where the keys are numerical values representing the index offsets of the various elements. What this means is that there is no relationship to where an element is within the array and where that element is actually stored in memory. But other than this slight detail, arrays are still arrays in JavaScript, and we can accomplish some pretty powerful things using them. To create an array in JavaScript, we can either instantiate the array class or we can use the array literal syntax. The most commonly used operations in arrays are probably push, pop, and index of. The most common way to put an additional item inside an existing array is by sending the new element to the push function. This will append the new element to the end of the existing array. In contrast, we can remove an element from an existing array by using the pop function, which removes the last element from an array before returning it. If we pop an empty array, the return value is undefined, since there's no elements defined in an array that has no elements. Finally, we can search through an array by using the index of function, which takes an object for its input and returns the index of the first element to strictly match against the input. If no matches are found, the return value is negative 1. There were several new functions added to the prototype of the array class in ECMAScript 5. Most of these functions allow us to iterate through the array applying a callback function to every element of the array. The output of these functions is usually a new array leaving the original one unchanged. Two common such methods are map and reduce. Array.map takes a callback function, which takes as its argument each element of the original array in turn. All values returned from Array.map are elements in the new array created by the function. The original array remains unchanged. Array.reduce also takes a callback function, but it returns a single value instead of a new array. The arguments to the callback is an accumulator object, and each element of the original array in turn. For a demonstration of how we could use arrays in our fictitious news website, Imagine we have an array with objects representing authors that post on the website. The user wishes to see the names of all the authors who have posted in sports. We could accomplish this by creating an empty array, iterating over the list of authors, finding authors that posted in sports, and then pushing the name of the author to the previously defined array. Alternatively, 
we could use Array.Filter to create a new array that only contains author objects if the author has posted in support. We could then map over this new array and only return the name of the authors in the filtered array. The output will be exactly the same in both cases. In the next video, we'll take a look at linked lists, which are similar to arrays, but offer some pretty interesting trade-offs.